Okay, so how is everyone today? Good. This is exciting because it's a long weekend. Yeah. So, shh, 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 shh. thank you. Uh, so, it's a long weekend. Does, what, what do you think about the light on? Do you like the light on or off? Off. You like it off? Nap time. <clears throat> so there's going to be uh, no uh, lecture on Monday because there's going to be no university on Monday. Uh, however, please note that all of the written homeworks that would, in a normal case, be due on Monday are going to be due on Wednesday. So all there's like six or something that are due on Wednesday, something like that. Any question about that? Okay, so let's get to get to business here. It is September first. August is gone. Can you believe it? <clears throat> so uh, the first thing uh, we're going to do is consider expressions like this. Uh, how about six? x to exponent 5, y to exponent negative 3, and then plus uh, 15, x to exponent uh, 4, say, y to exponent uh, 2. And we're back to that thing that we did at the beginning of last time, which is I want you to factor out the greatest common factor. But there's something slightly disturbing about this one. What's disturbing about it? One of the y's is negative, right? And one, one, of the, one of the exponents for the y is negative. That's a little disturbing. So let's, uh, let's just ignore that for a minute. Uh, if we were to factor out uh, the greatest constant, the greatest integer that can be factored out, what's that? Three. Three is common to both of them. Uh, and then as for the x's, how much x can we factor out? x to exponent 4, right? So we could do this. We could say 3x to 4, and you should be able to tell me uh, what, what it is that I have to write in here. So as for the first term, what? 2x, and then y to negative 3, because we were ignoring the y's for a moment. <clears throat> and then for the other term, what? 5y squared. Okay, and then observe inside of the parentheses, uh, 2 and 5 share no integer factors, so we can't get anything more from the coefficients. Uh, this, this term has an x, but that one has no x's, so we succeeded in getting all the x's out that we could. So now we want to get the y's out. And when we were looking at the x's, you know, it's kind of the choice, well, here this one has 5 and that one has 4, so how many are you supposed to take? Four, because you've got to take the same number from, from both. But then now, uh, it, can get, it can be kind of disturbing to think about this now. This one has negative three, and that one has two. How many are you supposed to take out? So do you observe that these are the choices? Negative three and two. The rule is that you always take out whichever one has the fewest. So the question becomes, well, which is smaller, negative 3 or 2? Negative 3 is smaller. It's further to the left on the number line. So this is the one you choose. This is the one you choose. Smaller, so we choose this one. Okay, <clears throat> that means we're going to factor out y uh, to exponent negative 3. So it's going to look like 3x to exponent 4, y to exponent negative 3, and then now what we have to come to grips with is what is it that you write in here to make it right? Okay. Uh, whoops. Okay, so most students have no problem with the first term. 
So, so what will what will we write here uh, for the first term? Two x. Because after all, that's what that's what we did. We that's what we took out y to negative three. So if you were to distribute the y to negative three back in, it would look just like that one. That's how you know that's that was the right thing to do. Okay. Then this is this next term is. Uh, whoops. I don't even want to write it there. That's my open spot. 2x plus. So what are we supposed to write for the next term? There'll surely be a 5, right? That 5 is going to be there. And the real question is, is how much y is going to be there? Well, let's come up here for a moment. When we went from, when we went from here to here, how many x's did we take away from this term? Four, right? So we had four, we took away four, so there weren't any x's. For this term, uh, how many did we have to begin with? X's. We had five of them, and we took away four, so there was just one left. So how many y's are left here? There's five of them left. Why are there going to be five of them left? <laughs> right. Because <laughs> there were two. There were two. And then we took away negative three of them. Right. To, to write out some arithmetic, there were two, and we took away negative three of them. So the exponent for y should be five. So this is 3x to 4, y to negative 3, and then 2x plus 5y to negative 5. Now, you might, you might, um, <coughs> sorry, that should be positive 5. 5y to 5. You might be incredulous and think, I don't know, that subtraction thing is kind of throwing me off. How could you confirm or deny that we've done it properly? Yeah, you could distribute it back in, right? So let's just consider just those two terms. If we were to, uh, if we were to multiply y to negative 3 by that, by that 5 term right there, then we'd have 5 times y to fifth times y to negative 3. So the y's, the, you'd have the same base. And what do you do when the bases are the same? You add the exponents. And then 5 plus negative 3 is? 2. OK. Any question about this one? OK, this one's a little bit disturbing, so let's try it again. <laughs> OK, how about um, 12a, oh. Before I get too far into this one, a very common request in an exercise such, such, such as this is to, is to say, give all your answers with positive exponents. So have we satisfied that, that request for this one? No, because that uh, says negative 3. So what, what should we do? Move the y's to the denominator. Moving those y's to the denominator negates the exponent so that the exponent is positive. <clears throat> OK, let's try this again up here. So how about 12a um, uh, to negative 6, mm, b cubed plus 60a to 10, uh, b to, I don't know, negative 1. Okay, similar, similar story as before, right? Except now there's more negative exponents. Okay. 
Well, as for the coefficients, what is the greatest integer that we can factor out? 12, right? So we can get a 12 out. Uh, as for the a's, what comes out? Negative 6, right? Because it's, the, it's a choice between shall we take out negative 6 of them or shall we take out 10 of them? And the decision is always choose the lesser. Which one is, is lesser, negative 6 or 10? Negative, negative 6 is the lesser. So a to negative 6 comes out. And then how much b comes out? Negative 1. So that's going to be the greatest common factor. And then now you have to think a little bit uh, to get, to get the, this other factor. Correct. So 12a to negative 6, b to negative 1. OK, so let's focus on the first term. So what will be the coefficient uh, for the first term? 1, right? Because we're taking the 12 all the way out. So I'm going to write a 1 just so I know that I have something to look at. Uh, how, much, how much a will there be? There'll be 0 of them, right? Because we took all negative 6 of them out. So they all came out. So corresponding to that term, there's no a's. OK, how much b's will this term give? It'll have four of them. And how'd you get four? Right, you always subtract however many you took out. We took out negative one b's. So three minus negative one, that's, uh, that's four. OK, then plus. Uh, what will be the coefficient corresponding to the second term? Five. Okay, how much a? Sixteen. Because there were ten and we took away negative six of them. Uh, and then how much b? None. So then uh, we could write this with all positive exponents in the following way. It could be uh, 12, all those will go down, and then this will be b to 4, uh, 5a to 16, over uh, a to 6, b. Any question about this one? <clears throat> this is okay. So, as if that wasn't fun enough, How about, uh, how about 8x to negative 1 fourth y squared plus um, 12x to 3 fourths y uh, to 6. So what's the exciting new thing that's introduced in this exercise? Fractional exponents. Exciting. OK, so how much uh, coefficient can come out? Four. How much x can come out? Negative one-fourth, right? Because the choice is between those two, negative a fourth and three-fourths, and the lesser is negative a fourth. Then how much y can come out? Two, right? OK. So what's the coefficient for the first term that'll be in here? 2. That's good. How much x will there be? None, right? Because we, we got all of them from this term. Because they had negative 1 fourth and we took them all. Uh, how much y will there be? None, right? So that's good. That's easy enough. 
So what will the coefficient be for this one? Three. Okay, now here's the place where it gets a little dicey. How much x will there be? One, right? One because it'll be x and then we had three-fourths of them. That's how much we started with. And then how much do we take away? We took away negative a fourth, but subtracting negative one fourth is the same as what? Adding a fourth. And then how much, uh, how much y will there be? There'll be four, right? Because we had, we don't usually write it this way, but I'm going to go ahead and write it just so you can see it. We had six and we took away two. We had six and we took away two. So then uh, we could write four x to negative one fourth y squared and then in the parentheses two times th uh, two plus three times x times y to four and then if the instruction said only positive exponents you could put that thing in the denominator any question about this one okay the last variation on this theme is something like the following how about um, 10 multiplied by x multiplied by x uh, plus, I don't know, 3 to exponent negative a third plus uh, 25 multiplied by x squared multiplied by x plus 3 to exponent 2 thirds. Okay, now you might be kind of tempted, so I'll, I'll point out that in the previous exercises we sort of had definitely and obviously three different kinds of things. We had coefficient things, we had x things, and we had y things. In, in, in that way it was kind of obvious. Right now, right now we still have three different kinds of things. Why do we still have three different kinds of things? Well, the coefficients are one, one kind of thing. The x's, they're one kind of thing. And then the place where you might be a little bit um, skeptical is, are, is the x plus 3 stuff, is that really different than the x's? It is. It is because here's the question. If you were to take just this thing, just x plus 3, to exponent two-thirds, or the other one, to negative one-third. Would you be able to somehow carry that out, like, like distribute that, like FOIL or something? Could you do that? No. No, you can't. In, in, particular, in particular, this is most certainly not equal to x to two-thirds plus three to two-thirds. Right? That, says, that says not equal. So I'm going I'm to write it, <laughs> write it out also, just in case you're missing that, not equal. So you can't, you can't really do anything to get this x outside of that exponent. So there's really three kinds of things still. There's this kind of thing. Coefficients are alike. There's this kind of thing. The x's that have integer exponents are just their own exponents are alike. And then these kind of things are also alike. OK. So that being the case, how much coefficient can we get out? Five. OK. Uh, how much how much x can we get out? Just just the one of them, right? And then finally, how much of the x plus three stuff can we get out? Exponent negative one third, right? That's what we can get out between the two choices: negative one third and positive two thirds. Negative one third is the lesser.
Okay, so then what will what will be this term? Five. Not a five, but a two, right? <clears throat> so that'll be a two. I keep putting twos in that first slot for some reason. I must have twos in the on the brain or something. I don't know. So then plus, what's the next one? Five x. Okay, and then how much x plus three will we have? We'll have exactly one of them because we started out with two-thirds of them and then we took away negative one-third of them. So minus negative one-third, which is, which is of course adding one-third. Okay, and, and if this exercise said simplify it, simplify it, then um, We'd have 5x, that negative stuff would go to the denominator, and then we'd have 2 multipl uh, plus 5x uh, times x plus 3, and then over x plus 3 to exponent 1 third. And then if I wanted you to do something like multiply this out or whatever, the, inst the instructions on the exercise would be clear about it. Any questions about this? Yes? Um, so I have the, like, the in the this one? Yeah. So when you like um put the um four x to the um exponent negative one four on the bottom, like at the end, that would like put the x to the negative one four. Yeah. Just the x. So the four can't move. If if you so if you were to move the four to the denominator, so this is just this is just doing what what you're asking, then it would look like this. Two plus uh, two plus three x y to four. So that's the stuff that's staying in the numerator, and then we could move this to the denominator. And your question is is well, what if I also move the four to the denominator? Then it would look like this. Why would it why would it do that? Why would its exponent be negative one in the denominator? Because its exponent is one in the numerator. This is four to four to one. Four to exponent one. So in the denominator it's four to exponent negative one. Does that answer? Okay. Other questions? Okay. <clears throat> So now uh, we're talking about rational functions. So this is section 1.6, I think. So a rational function, that is to say one of these. No, not function. I can't say function. It's not time for that yet. <laughs> rational expression so a rational expression is the ratio of polynomials that is to say it's got it's 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 a fraction it's got a polynomial in the numerator it's got a polynomial in the denominator okay so then i could ask for example, I could say cancel, uh, I'll say it like this, simplify simplify by canceling common factors. Okay, so for example, numerator x squared plus 8x plus 16 and the denominator is um, x squared plus 11x plus 28. So 
first thing I'm going to say is, is a, a, a very common error. So a lot of times when students are faced with an exercise more or less like this, they start out by saying, oh, well, I see an x squared there and an x squared there. I'll just cancel it. Does it work that way? No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> the universe would be utterly different if that, was, if that were true. <laughs> okay. Uh, division simply doesn't work that way. Okay. Uh, if it did, if it did, that would be like saying, uh, that would be like saying uh, 26 divided by 37. Uh, isn't that, you know, we could write that as, uh, you know, 10 plus 10. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that is right. <laughs> okay. 10 plus 10 plus 6 divided by 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 7, right? Let's start canceling some 10s, right? Does that work? 26 over 37 is the same as 16 over 27? Nah. And maybe that's true. Is it the same as 16 over, or 6 over 17? No. <laughs> No, you can't cancel when, when you have these pluses here. Forbidden. So for that reason, for that reason, uh, I typically write these uh, rational functions, uh, our expressions, I mean, with parentheses around the numerator and denominator as an attempt <laughs> to help you set up a psychological barrier against such treachery. Okay, so then you can't cancel the x squareds. But what we can do is we can uh, factor the numerator in the, and the denominator using the methods that we learned a couple days ago. So uh, the numerator factors, uh, we want to find two numbers whose product is 16 and whose sum is 8. Can you think of two such numbers? 4 and 4. So x plus 4 is one of the factors, and x plus 4 is the other factor. How about the denominator? 4 and 7, right? x plus uh, 4 multiplied by x plus 7. Okay, now what I'd like for you to observe <laughs> is that there are some factors that are common to the numerator and denominator. Okay? Um, is there... Is there a factor that would cancel, uh, <coughs> pardon me, this one? The x plus 4. Yeah, there's one in the denominator which we could pair it up with. Okay. So those two are, are, are paired up now. Uh, is there anything to cancel this x plus 4? Well, why doesn't that x plus 4 cancel it? It's already paired up, right? It's already going to the dance. So this one can't, this one can't also go with that one. So is there anything to cancel the, the x plus 7? No. So so that's the answer. Any question about this one? Yes? Well, uh, or we, we could have done it like this. I could have done x plus 4, x plus 4, x plus 4, <coughs> x plus 7. If, if this one was just really had its heart set on going, then these two could go together. That would be fine, but then that one would have to stay. So they, co they, they cancel in pairs. The dis the, okay, now I, now I see it. The distinction is, is that this here is multiplication. That's multiplication. Okay, thank you, sorry. And this is, uh, this one is addition. Yep, no, thank you, I appreciate it. Other questions? Okay, let's try another.
So how about x squared minus 9 divide by x squared plus 4x plus 3. Okay, so it's the exact same story as before, except the expressions are a little different. So, um, paradoxically, to me anyway, it's not really paradoxical, it's just sort of, it's just surprising to me. Most students can fairly straightforwardly uh, factor the bottom one, but the, the top one is harder. So let's do the bottom one first. What, how does the bottom one factor? Three and one, right? We want two numbers whose product is three and whose sum is four. So three and one will do it. <clears throat> okay, now how about the numerator? Okay, so it factors as x minus three times x plus three. And how did you do that? Uh, I recognized from when you were giving us the formula from a few days ago. Uh -huh. It's the um, first term, the third term, which is the first term, the second term, the third term. Okay. So I, I'm still not sure. I'm still not because there, there's two there's two kind of major ways to get to it. I'm still not sure which way you use. So can I you? Just know those you just know that one. Okay. So let me try and g give give words to your knowing. So so perhaps you looked at x squared minus nine, and you looked at it as x squared minus three squared because after all nine can be written as three squared. And then this is the difference of squares. This is the difference of squares. And then we've got a whole catchphrase about that. The difference of squares factors as what? Fission for a phrase that starts with P and ends with product of conjugates. <laughs> The difference of squares factors as the product of conjugates? Yeah, okay, we, we learned that a couple days ago, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> so, so, which conjugates? These conjugates. So what, is it, what does it mean? What do I mean when I say these conjugates? In what way are these conjugate? Right, this one looks like A plus B, and this one like A minus B, so such such binomials are said to be conjugate to each other. So this is the product of conjugates. Okay, alternatively, alternatively, you could have looked at this, you could have looked at this as x squared, and then how many, so there's one degree two term. This is the degree two term, and its coefficient is one. Uh, so that's how many x squareds there are. How many x's are there? Like this one has 4x, how many x's does this one have? Zero. All right, so plus 0x and then minus 9. And now we can look at it in this way and say, okay, I'm looking for two numbers whose product is what? Nine. Negative 9. We want the product to be negative 9, and we want the sum to be 0. Can you, can you think of two numbers whose product is negative 9 and whose sum is 0? How about those two, right? Three and negative three. Good. So I'm just pointing out that there's lots of ways to come, to come at it. So uh, will anything cancel? Yeah. yeah, right. So this one uh, with that one. Now wait a second. Could I have canceled it with this one? Why not? I mean, x plus three and x minus three, they're basically the same, right? <laughs> no, they're they're not they're not basically the same. They're not in in any way the same. So you can't do that. You you couldn't do it in that way. So this would be x minus three over x plus one. Any question about this one? <coughs> okay. <coughs> So here's a super fun one. X squared plus 11X 
plus 30 over x squared plus 5x plus 6. And then multiplied by x squared plus 7x plus 12. Uh, over x squared plus 8x plus 16. Okay, so this exercise is really just like the previous ones, except more so. All right. So now instead of having to factor two quadratics, now you've got to factor four of them. Okay. Well, let's factor the top left. How does it factor? 5 and 6, good. And the bottom left? 5 and 1, nope. 3 and 2. Why 3 and 2? <laughs> okay. So 3 and 2. Top right, three and four. Bottom right, four and four, good. Okay, so now, uh, all of these are, all of these side by sides, these are all a product. So this is product, product, divide, product, product, like so, and then product, product, product. All of these products and quotients, all these products and divisions, they, they, they commute in, in the following kind of way. They can be commuted in the, in the following kind of way. We can write this as one big numerator. So x plus 6, x plus 5, x plus 4, x plus 3. We can take all the numerator stuff and put it all together. And then all the denominator stuff, put it all together. Okay, and then is there any cancellation? Sure there is, right? Will anything take the, six, uh, the x plus 6? No. no. How about the x plus 5? No. no. How about the x plus 4? Yes. Wait, something's not right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so again, nothing will take the 6. Nothing will take the 5. Will anything, cause then I, will anything take the four? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that one is going to go with which one? It doesn't matter. Okay. So that one. Will anything take the plus three? Yeah. So those are all the things that are paired up and leaving. Okay. <clears throat> that being the case, uh, how about, uh, so it becomes x plus 6, x plus 5 over x plus 2, x plus 4. Any question about this one? <clears throat> Questions? Okay. So, a brief reminder about something you already knew, and that is that if you have an x and you're going to divide it by a fraction, <coughs> a over b, well, division by a fraction is the same as what? Very good. So that this is the same as x multiplied by something, and the name of that something is the reciprocal. But then that raises the question, what is the reciprocal of a over b, b over a? So reciprocal means, for, for, in, for a fraction, it means switch the positions of numerator and denominator. OK, so I could ask, I could say something like, uh, 
2x squared uh, plus x minus 6 in the numerator divide by x squared minus 1 in the denominator and then that's going to be divided by uh, the, rational func the rational expression x squared minus 4 over x squared plus 2x plus 1. So in the very first place, I'd like for you to observe that this is more or less just like the previous exercise with one slight modification. What modification? Division. Division. But, we, but then we can make it just like the other one by doing what? By reciprocating this one right? and turning it into product. Okay, so that's the first thing we'll do. 2x squared plus x minus 6 over x squared minus 1 and then multiplied by x squared plus 2x plus 1 and divided by x squared minus 4. Now that we've had time to look at it, I want to point out that there is one more new element to this exercise. Anyone care to take a stab at what I'm imagining? Right. So notice that, uh, again, we have, we have four uh, degree two polynomials, but la all, all the polynomials so far in this section, they've been monic, which, is, which means what? One. The leading coefficient is one. And then, oh, now, now we have this. Uh, so it's like these, these three are in easy mode, right? The monic ones. And then this one is slightly more complicated. So I'll go ahead and factor all of the easy ones in the interest of time and just leave that non-monic one for a moment. So this one factors as x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 1 because I'm viewing this as the difference of squares, x squared minus 1 squared. So it factors as the product of those conjugates. The numerator on the right is x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 1. The denominator on the right, I'm viewing that as x squared minus 2 squared. So the difference of those squares becomes the product of these conjugates, like so. Any question about those? Then it remains to be seen, what about this? How does this factor? OK. Well, to deal with that, we'll make an aside. We want to factor that thing. <clears throat> so we want to find two uh, numbers whose sum is what? One. One, the middle number. And whose product is what? Negative six. Not negative six. Negative 12 because it's the product of the first and last number. We want the product to be the product of 2 and negative 6, which is negative 12. So again, I'll be unbearable and say, well, maybe it's 12 and negative 1. Is it 12 and negative 1? <laughs> how, how do we tell if it's 12 and negative 1 that we're looking for? The sum, right? The sum is 11. Is that what we wanted? No, right? So what are the numbers that we're really looking for? Not, not negative 3 and 2. Negative that won't work. Negative 3 and positive 4. Negative 3 and positive 4 because their product is negative 12 and their sum is 1. So, so we found the winner. Okay. What is it that we do with these two numbers? is we take this, Gesundheit, we take this and we split that 1x in this way. We split that 1x in this way and we say that really that's 2x squared minus 3x plus 4x minus 6. So if we were to combine the x's, what would we have? 1x, right? 
So now what do we do now that we've split the x's like this? We make groups. Wow, so y'all, I'm getting my, my spider sense is telling me you're not comfortable with this. So is this, I'm sure that we did this, yeah? <laughs> okay, so what do we do with this group? Take out x, the greatest common factor. Uh, so that would be 2x and then minus 3 if we take out x. And then what's the greatest common factor here? 2. And if we factor a 2 out of there, what do we get? 2x minus 3. And so now someone please say it. They're the same, right? So we did it right. These are the same. If, 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 if I were covering up y's, then y's would be common, right? And we could factor out a common y. And if we did factor out that y, what would be the other factor? From this one, we'd get an x. From this one, we'd get a 2. Very good. So this is 2x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 2. So have we answered the exercise? No, we finished the assigned, right? Now we can continue the actual exercise. So 2x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 1 and then all over uh, x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x plus 2, times x minus 2. And will there be any cancellation in there? Yeah. Sure, right? Nothing's going to take the 2x minus 3. Not monic. No one wants to go with it. So that one can cancel with that one. Uh, x plus 1. Can cancel with that one. Can the x plus 1 cancel with the x minus 1? No. no. They're not the same. So the answer would be 2x minus 3 times x plus 1 over x minus 1 times x minus 2. Any question about that one? Okay, so that's all the time we have for today. Have a nice weekend. No class on Monday.